Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video on our channel, Nostalgia. Today we're here to remember and honor the lives of some well-known celebrities who have recently passed away. Stay tuned for special tributes in our top headline section. Before we begin, please show your support by giving this video a thumbs up. Let's dive in. Thank you. Richard Taylor, a distinguished English medical doctor and independent politician, dedicated much of his career to championing healthcare issues. Born on July 7, 1934, in Kidderminster, Taylor became renowned for his role as the Member of Parliament for Wire Forest from 2001 to 2010, where he focused extensively on health policy. Taylor's academic journey took him through the Lay School at Clare College, Cambridge, before he completed his medical studies at Imperial College School of Medicine. His early career included work across various London hospitals and service as a medical officer in the Royal Air Force, reflecting his lifelong commitment to public service. Entering politics later in life, Taylor was propelled by a local issue, closure of the accident and emergency department at Kidderminster Hospital. His passionate campaign resonated widely leading to a landslide victory in the 2001 general election. His election was a landmark event, marking him as one of the few independent candidates to secure a parliamentary seat. During his tenure, Taylor served on the Health Select Committee and co-chaired the all-party parliamentary group on local hospitals, leveraging his medical expertise to influence national health policy. He was also known for his broader political stances including his opposition to the Iraq War and advocacy for the rationalization of British railways. After leaving Parliament, Taylor continued to advocate for health care issues, standing in the 2015 general election for the National Health Action Party. Though he did not win, his contributions were recognized in 2014 when he was appointed a member of the Order of the British Empire for his services to the community in Worcestershire and to Kidderminster Hospital. Richard Taylor passed away at the age of 89, leaving behind a legacy marked by his unwavering advocacy for health care and his profound impact on public health policy. Tributes to Richard Taylor continue to pour in, honoring his dedication and service to his community. Lubomir Roman Q an esteemed computer scientist and IBM fellow, profoundly shaped modern data storage technology with his pioneering contributions to magnetic thin film storage heads. Born on April 17, 1931, in Zhovkva, Poland, now Ukraine, Romanku's innovations have left a lasting imprint on the global tech industry. Educated at the University of Alberta and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Romanku earned his MS and PhD in metallurgy and materials setting the stage for a career marked by groundbreaking development. Joining IBM's Thomas J. Watson Research Center in Yorktown Heights, New York, he embarked on work that would revolutionize data storage. In the 1970s, his collaboration with David Thompson led to the development of magnetic thin film storage heads, essential for reading and writing information on hard drives. Roman Q's illustrious career is highlighted by his holding over 65 U.S. patents and authoring more than 150 papers. His leadership extended beyond lab work, serving as a member of the IBM Academy of Technology and achieving fellow status with both the IE and the Electrochemical Society. Among his many accolades are the IEEE Morris and Liebman Memorial Award, the Society of Chemical Industries Perkin Medal, and the Electrochemical Society's Vittorio De Nora Award. His influence extended into academia and professional organizations, including his role as Nahalny Plastin, chief scout of the Plast Ukrainian Scouting Organization, and his membership in the Shevchenko Scientific Society, USA. In recognition of his monumental contributions to engineering and technology, Roman Q was inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame in 2012 and elected as a foreign member of the National Academy of Engineering in 2014. Lubomir Romanku passed away at the age of 93, leaving behind a legacy in science and engineering that continues to influence and inspire. Tribute to Lubomir Romanku.
Marty Pavlich, a stalwart of the Detroit Red Wings and a celebrated defensive force in ice hockey, was born on November 6, 1927, in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. His career in the National Hockey League, spanning from 1947 to 1957, was distinguished by tenacious defense and strategic gameplay, making him a cornerstone of the Red Wings during their 1950s dynasty. Before joining the NHL, Pavlich honed his skills in the Ontario Hockey Association with the Galt Red Wings, where his remarkable talent became evident early on. His entry into the NHL with the Detroit Red Wings set the stage for a legendary career during which he accumulated 252 points across 634 regular season games and played a crucial role in securing four Stanley Cup victories in 1950, 1952, 1954, and 1955. Pavlich was not just a player, he was a tactician, renowned for his ability to neutralize the league's top scorers, famously shadowing stars like Maurice Rocket Richard. His contributions extended beyond scoring, as he was a key figure in some of the most formidable defensive lineups of his era. Jack Adams, the Red Wings manager, once described him as one of the foundational players around whom the team was built. After retiring from professional play, Pavelic successfully transitioned to the business world, co-founding a plastics manufacturing company with fellow Red Wing Ted Lindsay. This venture allowed him to apply his leadership and strategic thinking off the ice, contributing to the growth of the automotive industry. Marty Pavelic passed away at the age of 96 after a battle with ALS, marking the end of an era for the Detroit Red Wings as he was the last surviving member of the 1950 Stanley Cup team. His legacy, characterized by both his contributions to the sport of hockey and his business acumen, continues to inspire and influence. Tribute to Marty Pavlich. Renowned for his distinguished career within the Central Intelligence Agency, Avalon Smith was a formidable American intelligence officer whose pivotal roles spanned global hotspots, including ten years as station chief in Prague, Berlin, Langley, Beirut, and Tehran. Born on August 25, 1929, in Monroe Township, New Jersey, Smith's expertise in Soviet affairs significantly shaped counterterrorism strategies and espionage techniques during the Cold War. Smith's educational journey began at Phillips Exeter Academy, and continued through Dartmouth College, culminating in advanced studies at the University of London. His commitment to national service was evident early on, with a tenure in the U.S. Army Security Agency before his recruitment into the CIA. One of Smith's notable assignments placed him in Beirut during the 1967 Six-Day War, period marked by the controversial USS Liberty incident. Although he did not directly witness the communications proving an intentional attack, Smith confirmed the existence of transcripts indicating that the Israelis were aware their target was an American vessel. These revelations, however, were reportedly suppressed to avoid diplomatic fallout. In his roles as chief of the CIA's counterterrorism staff and later as executive assistant, Deputy Director Frank Carlucci, Smith was instrumental in devising operational tactics that profoundly influenced intelligence operations in Eastern Europe and the Soviet Union. His innovations included the development of the brush contact technique and strategic manipulations known as the GAP, which enhanced the CIA's capacity for clandestine activity. Following his retirement from active intelligence service, Smith became a respected voice in public discourse, contributing to national publications such as the Washington Post and the Boston Globe and engaging audiences with lectures on a broad range of security topics. Evelyn Smith passed away at the age of 94 at his home, following a battle with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. His legacy in intelligence and national security continues to influence both policy and practice. Tribute to Evelyn Smith. Renowned globally for his dramatic tenor voice and compelling performances, Lando Bartolini was a celebrated Italian tenor who left an indelible mark on the world of opera. Born in Prato, Italy, on April 11, 1937, Bartolini's remarkable musical journey began after he won the prestigious Mario Lanza Award in 1968, 
leading him to study at the Academy of Vocal Arts in Philadelphia. His international debut came in 1973 as Osaka in Mascani's Iris at the Gran Teatro del Liceo in Barcelona, setting the stage for a storied career. Bartolini became a naturalized American citizen and captivated audiences across the United States, including a notable performance as Turidu in Cavalleria Rusticana at the New York City Opera in 1982. He returned to Italy to perform the title role in Andrea Chenier at the esteemed La Scala in Milan. His career continued to flourish as he graced prestigious opera stages in Vienna, Munich, Hamburg, Berlin, Paris, Covent Garden in London, and the Arena di Verona, as well as venues in South America. In 1986, Bartolini stepped in for Luciano Pavarotti in a production of Andrea Chenier at the Lyric Opera of Chicago, earning him critical acclaim. He made his Metropolitan Opera debut in 1988, further cementing his status as a leading figure in opera. Lando Bartolini passed away at the age of 87, leaving behind a legacy of unforgettable performances and significant contributions to the world of opera. Tribute to Lando Bartolini Russell Morash, renowned as the pioneering creator of the iconic WGBH series This Old House, and a longtime collaborator with culinary legend Julia Child, has left an indelible mark on television. Born on February 11, 1936, in Lexington, Massachusetts, Marash revolutionized public television with his innovative approach to lifestyle programming. Starting his career as a camera operator at WGBH in 1958, he quickly rose to become a producer and director, significantly shaping the landscape of educational TV. In 1979, Morash introduced This, This Old House, a groundbreaking series that not only popularized the home improvement genre, but also established the blueprint for reality-based instructional television. The show's success sparked a genre that continues to thrive, with This Old House still airing to this day, cherished by a loyal audience for its practical, that expert advice and engaging storytelling. Beyond home renovation, Marash's partnership with Julia Child began in 1963 with The French Chef. His direction brought Child's charismatic teaching style to the masses, making the art of French cooking both accessible and entertaining. Their collaboration spanned over three decades, during which Marash's innovative production techniques allowed Child's magnetic personality to flourish on screen. Morash also developed The Victory Garden another staple of public television that blended his passions for gardening and education. His work not only entertained, but also educated generations of viewers, earning him a reputation as a trailblazer in public broadcast. His contributions were widely recognized, influencing not just audiences, but the entire public media landscape. WGBH President and CEO Susan Goldberg praised him as cornerstone of public media, whose commitment to innovation and to the audience finds our work to this day. Russell Morash passed away at the age of 88, leaving behind a legacy of educational programming and a revolution in how television is consumed and appreciated. Tribute to Russell Morash. Chris Wiggs, celebrated as the brilliant inventor of Polly Pocket, forever changed the landscape of children's toys with his compact and imaginative creation. Born on July 7, 1940, in London, England, Wiggs initially pursued industrial design before venturing into the world of toy creation. His most iconic invention, Polly Pocket, originated in 1983 from a simple yet ingenious idea, transforming a makeup compact into a portable dollhouse. This innovation quickly captivated the public's imagination and Polly Pocket was commercially launched in 1989, enchanting hearts with its detailed miniature worlds. Polly Pocket's unique charm lay in its blend of portability and intricate playsets, allowing children to carry entire miniature worlds in their pocket. Despite the dominance of larger dolls like Barbie, Polly Pocket carved out a significant niche, accumulating sales that soared to $180 million by 1994. It became a defining product of Mattel, witnessing tremendous global success and expanding into a vast array of designs and themes. Throughout his career, Wiggs remained a private individual, focusing on continuous innovation while shunning the limelight. 
His dedication to toy design extended beyond Polly Pocket, contributing to numerous other toy ideas that brought joy to children worldwide. Wiggs' impact on the toy industry is enduring, with Polly Pocket remaining a beloved brand even after his passing. Chris Wiggs passed away at his home in France, surrounded by his family, at the age of 74. His legacy lives on in the ongoing popularity of the toys he created and the joy they continue to bring to children around the globe. Tribute to Chris Wiggs Yosh Uchida, a revered American judo coach and a transformative figure in sports education, left a lasting legacy through his extensive contributions to judo both nationally and at San Jose State University. Born on April 1, 1920, in the small farming community of Calexico, California, Uchida's journey from humble beginnings led him to become a pivotal force in the world of judo, revolutionizing the sport and nurturing talent to Olympic heights. Uchida's pioneering efforts began at San Jose State University, where, as a student in 1940, took on the role of student coach for the judo program. His leadership endured for over 70 years, during which he developed the university's judo program into a national powerhouse. Under his guidance, San Jose State's judo teams clinched numerous national championships, highlighting his profound impact on collegiate judo. During World War II, Uchida served as a medical technician in the U.S. Army, returning to his academic and coaching pursuits after the war. His innovative approach included co-developing weight class systems and formal competition rules, enhancing judo's credibility and aligning it more closely with Olympic standards. His efforts culminated in coaching the first U.S. Olympic judo team in 1964, where his protégés achieved historic success. Beyond his coaching accomplishments, Uchida was also a successful entrepreneur. In 1957, he ventured into the medical laboratory business, which flourished under his stewardship and eventually facilitated major community projects in San Jose's Japantown. His business acumen and community contributions were widely recognized, earning him numerous accolades, including the prestigious Order of the Sacred Treasure from Japan. Uchida's legacy extends beyond his professional achievements. He was a cherished community leader, mentor, and advocate for judo as a discipline that shapes character and instills discipline. His passing at the age of 104 marks the end of a remarkable era. Tribute to Yosh Uchida. Lizzie Musi trailblazer in drag racing and a celebrated figure on Discovery Channel's Street Outlaws, No Prep Kings left an indelible mark on the sport with her dynamic presence and formidable skill. Born into a racing family, Lizzie's destiny was intertwined with the racetrack from an early age. Her father, Pat Musey, an eight-time PDRA Pro Street World Champion, guided her to follow in his footsteps in North Carolina, where she was born and raised. Lizzie honed her abilities and became a formidable competitor, achieving significant milestones throughout her career. She made history as the first woman to win a pro nitrous national event, setting a powerful example for aspiring female racers. Her racing prowess shone brightly on Street Outlaws, No Prep Kings, where she was known for her strategic acumen and fierce driving style. Beyond her racing achievements, Lizzie played a crucial role in managing Musi Racing, significantly contributing to its operations and success. Her influence extended beyond the track, inspiring countless young women to pursue their passions in the male-dominated field of motorsports. Away from the spotlight, Lizzie's vibrant personality and resilience in facing life's challenges resonated deeply with fans and fellow racers alike. Despite her diagnosis with stage 4 breast cancer, she continued to race and engage with her community, sharing her journey and maintaining her spirited disposition. Her courage during her battle with cancer was as formidable as her presence on the racetrack. Lizzie openly shared her experience, hoping to inspire others facing similar struggles. Lizzie's legacy is not just in the records she set or the races she won, but also in the courage she displayed both on and off the track and the hearts she touched within the racing community and beyond. Tragically, Lizzie Musi passed away at her home in North Carolina at the age of 33.
Her story remains a poignant reminder of the strength and spirit she brought to every aspect of her life. Thank you for joining us on this nostalgic journey as we honor these beloved celebrities. Their influence on our lives and the entertainment industry will never be forgotten. If you found this video meaningful, please show your support by liking and subscribing. Your encouragement motivates us to keep sharing stories that resonate with you. Until next time, take care and cherish the memories of those who have left an enduring legacy. Thank you for watching.